On a cold Martian night in August 2012, a one-ton robot dangled beneath a rocket-powered crane and dropped onto another world. That robot is NASA's Curiosity rover, and this is the story of its first day, its first drill, its first dunes, first clays, first salt-rich rocks, and the ridges and valleys it's still climbing today. Curiosity touched down inside Gale Crater on August 6, 2012. The landing ellipse was deliberately placed beside a dark dune field at the base of a five-kilometer stack of layered rocks called Mount Sharp, a geologic time capsule. Scientists had spotted orbital signatures of clays and sulfate salts low on the mountain, minerals that record water and changing climate. The mission read those layers like pages in a book to learn if Mars was ever habitable. Within days, Curiosity rolled off its landing pad and left its first tracks in Martian soil. You'll notice dots and dashes in those tracks, Easter eggs shaped like Morse code to help measure wheel slippage. The rover's first laser zaps from ChemCam analyzed a target nicknamed Coronation, while its cameras surveyed a landscape of streambed pebbles, evidence that water once ran here. Curiosity's first science campaign headed east to Yellowknife Bay, a basin of mudstones crisscrossed by white calcium sulfate veins. Here, the team chose a flat, veined slab called John Klein for a first-ever drill on another planet's bedrock. On Sol 182, February 8, 2013, the drill rotated and hammered, producing gray powder for the rover's internal labs, Shemin for mineralogy and SAM for chemistry. Those first samples revealed ancient mudstone formed in freshwater lakes, mildly salty and near neutral, conditions that could have supported microbial life. That's the core mission objective, not to find life, but to find a habitable environment. Curiosity delivered. With habitability checked, Curiosity turned toward Mount Sharp, the path included the Dingo Gap, a sand ramp that the rover crossed in early 2014 to avoid sharp, embedded rocks. Even so, by late 2013, the wheels showed surprising damage, punctures and tears. Engineers responded with new driving strategies and, later, an onboard traction control algorithm that adapts wheel speeds to the terrain, reducing stress and prolonging wheel life. These were hard-won lessons that kept Curiosity moving, slower, smarter, and still in the game years later. At a junction dubbed the Kimberley, Curiosity found intersecting layers that spoke of changing water flow directions over time. The rover drilled Winjana, a sandstone target that helped scientists compare cementation and diagenesis, how Mars rocks were glued together long after they formed. Curiosity arrived at the base of Mount Sharp in the Lower Murray Formation around Pahrump Hills. This is where the mission really begins the mountain's layered story. The rover drilled multiple targets, including Confidence Hills, sampling fine-grained lake sediments that would become the baseline layer for the climb. Next up, Mars in motion. The Bagnall Dunes are dark, active dunes at Mount Sharp's base. Curiosity became the first interplanetary dune field scientist, imaging ripples, scooping sands, and watching seasonal winds reshape the surface. These campaigns helped decode how grains move in thin air and how dune chemistry differs from bedrock. Climbing higher, Curiosity reached Vera Rubin Ridge, a linear feature with a strong hematite signal spotted from orbit. On the ridge, the rover drilled targets such as Rock Hall and Pettigrove Point, investigating how iron oxides and other minerals like acoganate and jarosite record ancient water chemistry. The science synthesis points to complex diagenesis, fluids percolating through rocks, altering them long after deposition. Around this time, Curiosity's SAM instrument also made headlines, detecting preserved organic molecules in ancient mudstones and charting seasonal methane variations in the atmosphere mysteries still fueling debate about sources and sinks of carbon on Mars. If Vera Rubin Ridge was about iron oxides, Glen Torridon was about clay. Orbiters predicted high clay content here, and Curiosity confirmed it with its drills Aberlady and Kilmarie, the highest clay mineral abundances of the mission so far. Clays form in water and are excellent at trapping organics. Finding them in abundance gives a richer picture of Gale's ancient lakes. Glen Torridon also showcased striking periodic bedrock ridges sculpted by wind over geologic time. 
Over a full Martian year here, Curiosity gathered 11 drill samples and stitched together the story of a long-lived lake system and later fluids that altered these rocks. In 2021, the rover posed for one of its most dramatic selfies at a butte nicknamed Mont Mercou, a layered outcrop about six meters tall. Nearby, Curiosity drilled Nontron, its 30th sample, named after a French village and the clay mineral Nontronite. The outcrop sits near transition, from clay-rich units toward layers richer in salts. After a narrow, sandy climb through Paratepui Pass, Curiosity entered the long-anticipated sulfate-bearing unit, a region whose salts likely formed as Mars dried out. These rocks are clues to climate change on a planetary scale. The team began acquiring samples, including Kanaima in late 2022, as the rover explored new textures and chemistries. By now, Curiosity had traveled 35 plus kilometers and survived more than a decade in Gale, a testament to careful driving, new software, and robust engineering. High on Mount Sharp lies the Jadas Valleys Ridge, a dramatic, boulder-studded debris ridge thought to have formed by catastrophic flows of water and debris coming down the mountain. Reaching it was a long-standing goal. If you can read these deposits, you read the last chapters of the mountain's watery history. In 2023, Curiosity finally explored the ridge's upper reaches and then the Gaitas Vallis Channel, collecting panoramas and chemistry that tie together erosion, transport, and deposition on a drying Mars. In February 2024, Curiosity completed its 40th successful drilling at a target nicknamed Mineral King, adding another data point to the geologic climb. Later that year, scientists reported an intriguing first deposits containing elemental sulfur, sulfur in its pure form, among a series of rocks crushed by the rover, offering new clues to late-stage fluids and redox processes on Mars. So, what do all these drills, dunes, ridges, and passes add up to? First, ancient lakes and habitability. From Yellowknife Bay onward, Curiosity has shown that Gale Crater once held long-lived lakes with neutral pH and the ingredients for life water, organics, energy sources, and elements like sulfur and phosphorus. The lakes cycled over time with deltas and muds laid down layer upon layer. Second, a planet that changed. As Curiosity climbed, minerals shifted from clay-rich to sulfate-rich, a fingerprint of drying climate. Hematite on Vera Rubin Ridge, clays in Glen Torridon, and widespread sulfates higher up together sketch a world that went from wetter to drier, with fluids continuing to move through rocks long after deposition, altering them. Third, complex carbon chemistry. SAM's detections of preserved organics in ancient mudstones and seasonal methane cycles in the air suggest an active, if enigmatic, carbon story. Curiosity didn't set out to find life, and these signals are not life by themselves, but they show that Gale's rocks hold on to carbon over billions of years, and the atmosphere still changes with the seasons today. Fourth, active surface processes. The Bagnold Dunes campaigns proved Mars isn't static. Its thin winds still shuffle sand grains into ripples and dunes that migrate over time, and those grains differ chemically from the bedrock they erode. Fifth, engineering for the long haul. Wheel wear threatened to clip Curiosity's ambitions, but new driving paths and traction control kept the rover rolling. The team also recovered drilling after a feed mechanism issue in 2016 by inventing a new technique called feed extended drilling. A reminder that ingenuity is as important as hardware. Today, in its fourth extended mission, October 2022 through October 2025, Curiosity is working the upper layers of Mount Sharp, above Glen Torridon and Vera Rubin Ridge, connecting sulfate-rich strata, the Gaitas Vallis debris and channel deposits, and marker bands that slice across the mountain. Each drive adds detail to an ancient climate curve, from lake-friendly to drought-ridden and everything in between. The rover has logged 35.5 kilometers across Gale as of 2025, and it's still sending home landscapes no human eye has ever seen. 
curiosity's genius is patience. Some missions sprint for days or weeks. This one hikes layer by layer for years, reading Mars's climate like a memoir. The bottom chapters tell of standing water and habitable chemistry. The middle pages show fluids returning, altering rocks as the planet dried out. The upper pages speak in salts and debris, flash floods and wind, punctuating a long fade to desert. And yet, the rover's view is anything but bleak. Every mass cam panorama is a reminder. Lakes once filled this crater, rivers cut these channels, and time stacked these layers with the care only a planet can manage. Curiosity didn't find life, but it proved Mars was once a place where life could have made a home. Until next time, keep imagining, keep questioning, and always keep looking up.